Well, hello to our viewers just tuning in. It's Thursday morning here in Seoul. You're watching Arirang's live coverage of President Yoon suk yeols policy discussion with citizens. Coming to you from our studio in Seoul, I'm Song Yoo Jin. Now, today's discussion is the 26th edition of its kind and the first to be held this month. The last session was on May 14th here in Seoul, focusing on labor issues, including protections for non-union workers, the self-employed, and freelancers. And during that meeting, President Yoon also highlighted his commitment to complete what he calls his four major reforms in the medical, education, pension, and labor sectors. Now, at today's meeting, which is once again the 26th policy discussion with citizens, President Yoon is expected to address the country's manufacturing industry. Now, for those of our viewers who are unfamiliar with the policy discussion with citizens, this meeting began this January when President Yoon decided to replace the government policy briefings with these public debates. Now, typically, presidents would start the new year with briefings from each ministry on their plans for the new year. But starting this year, President Yoon expanded this format to include public discussions, inviting citizens and experts to address issues impacting people's lives alongside relevant ministries as well. Now, the approach of this meeting, it aims to develop more comprehensive, practical, and also effective solutions to improve livelihoods of the people, which the president has emphasized as a top priority for his administration. Now, for those who are curious, past sessions of the policy discussion with the citizens have addressed topics such as housing, jobs, medical reform, public transportation, media policy, the low birth rate, and energy policies. Now, it looks like, uh, the, it looks like it's going to take a while for the meeting to begin, so let's first take a look at some of the pending stories and the issues that have been making headlines here in the country, starting with the South Korean leader once again. President Yoon suk yeol on Wednesday said the current birth rate, which has become a key chronic issue here in the country is causing concerns as far as the existence of a nation and efforts cannot be delayed further. While he previously called the plummeting birth rate as a national emergency before, yesterday was when he officially declared it. Our presidential office correspondent Kim do reports. A population state of emergency has been officially declared in South Korea, with the government expecting the fertility rate to fall to 0.65 in 2025. This coming as President Yoon suk yeol on Wednesday presided over a presidential committee on aging, society and population policy meeting, the second time to do so. The president added that three areas will be the focus of the government's all-out efforts. Work and family life balance, child care and housing. For work and family balance, the government aims to up the current rate of dads taking paternity leave to 50% from current 6.8. For this, the government will financially support companies temporarily losing employees while upping the first three months of the government's parental leave pay to a maximum of 2.5 million Korean won or about 1,800 U.S. dollars from current $1,000. The government is also expanding public child care programs so children aged from 3 to 5 will receive free education and care. Lastly, for housing, newlyweds and couples with newborns will receive financial support while being prioritized when purchasing a newly built home. But that's not all. 저출생은 이런 양립, 양육, 주거 3대 핵심 분야 이외에도 수도권 집중과 같은 사회 구조적 요인과 경쟁 압력, 높은 불안과 같은 사회 문화적 요인이 복합적으로 얽혀 있습니다. 특히 우리 사회의 과도하고 불필요한 경쟁 문화를 바꿔서 더 여유 있고 성숙한 사회가 될수 있도록 노력해야 합니다. President Yoon has called the current low birth rate a national emergency before and said he will create a new ministry for this and have its minister be the deputy prime minister for social affairs, a role the current education minister holds, showing the new role's significant power and responsibility. But the creation of a new ministry will need the support of the opposition-led parliament, which is always an uphill battle. Meanwhile, before the meeting, he took time to visit a child care center 
run by a company in Gyeonggi-do province where the meeting was held too. He spoke to children and teachers there to see what's needed. By law, companies in South Korea with more than 300 full-time female workers or at least 500 full-time workers need to have their own child care centers. Kim Do-yeon, Arirang News. Now, also here in Korea, turning to the latest in the standoff between the Korean government and the medical community, internal discord has arisen among regional doctors associations following the announcement of an indefinite walkout by the head of the Korean Medical Association that is the largest doctors group here in the country. Choi Soyoung brings us the latest. During a national strike led by the Korean Medical Association on Tuesday, its president, Im hyun Tech announced an indefinite walkout starting June 27. However, following this statement, the president of the Gyeonggi-do Medical Association said he was completely unaware of this indefinite walkout and that all 16 regional medical association presidents were surprised by Im's sudden announcement. Also, private medical practitioners said that an indefinite strike had not been discussed or decided upon. In addition, the Korean Intern Resident Association expressed opposition to the KMA. Im had proposed forming a countermeasure committee encompassing all doctors' associations and offered a co-chair position to Park Dan, the head of the KIRA. However, Park posted on Facebook on Wednesday that he too had not heard anything about this, saying KIRA would not participate, while criticizing Im's indefinite strike declaration. Meanwhile, professors of medicine at the country's big five university hospitals have either begun or are planning to begin walkouts of undetermined lengths. Medical professors at Seoul National University Hospital started an indefinite walk stoppage from Monday, excluding emergency and intensive care services. Professors at Severance Hospitals are training hospitals of Yonsei University Medical School are set to join the walkout on June 27. Those at Asan Medical Center, the training hospital of Ulsan University, will stop work for a week starting July 4. While medical professors at the Catholic University of Korea will discuss the matter on Thursday, and those at Songyungwan University will also hold a meeting shortly. However, even during the walkouts, the professors will ensure there is essential medical staffing for emergency and severe care services and intensive care units and delivery rooms. To minimize severe medical disruptions, the government has implemented a rotational on-call system for emergency cases. Choi Soo-hyung, Arirang News. Now, on the economic front, South Korea's overall current account surplus increased last year, but its current account balance differed with each country. It saw a record surplus with the United States, but a record deficit with China. Our economics correspondent Lee Soo-jin has the details. South Korea recorded its largest ever current account deficit with China last year, but also the largest ever current account surplus with the United States. According to the Bank of Korea on Wednesday, South Korea's overall current account balance recorded a surplus of more than 35 billion U.S. dollars last year, up from around 25 billion U.S. dollars from the year before. This was mostly driven by its current account surplus with the United States surging from nearly $69 billion in 2022 to $91 billion last year. That's the largest current account surplus with the United States on record since related data was first collected. And this was led by the current account balance for goods recording its largest surplus ever thanks to strong demand for automobiles and machinery. On the other hand, South Korea's current account balance with China recorded a deficit of $30 billion, also a record high. South Korea's current account balance with China has remained in the red for two consecutive years after falling into negative territory for the first time in 21 years in 2022. And last year's deficit was greater than that of 2022. This comes as outbound shipments of goods, namely chips, plunged by a large margin, while inbound shipments of goods dropped only slightly. South Korea's current account balance with the United States has shown an increasing surplus since 2020, while its current account balance with China has shown a greater deficit in 2023 than in 2022. It looks as though this decoupling trend driven by rising exports of AI chips will continue. As for its current account balance with other nations, South Korea's current account deficit with Japan last year shrank compared to a year earlier due to decreased imports of goods such as chemical products. 
But its current account surplus with Southeast Asian countries fell as outbound shipments of chips, oil and chemical products fell. The Bank of Korea official said that this surplus drop seen with the Southeast Asia region was, however, offset by the record surplus with the U.S. and that the central bank believes that exports to the U.S. will remain robust for a prolonged period. Lee Soo-jin, Arirang News. Well, for our viewers who are just tuning in, you're watching Arirang's coverage of President Yoon's policy discussion with citizens. Now, as mentioned before, today's discussion is the 26th edition of its kind and the first to be held this month. The last session was on May 14th here in his capital, Seoul, focusing on labor issues, including protections for non-union workers, the self-employed and freelancers. And at that meeting, the president also highlighted his commitment to complete what he calls his four major reforms in the medical, education, pension and labor sector. Now, at today's meeting, the 26th edition, President Yoon is expected to address the country's manufacturing industry. Now, for those unfamiliar with the policy discussion with the citizens, it began this January when President Yoon decided to replace the government policy briefings with these public debates. Now, typically, presidents would start the new year with briefings from each ministry on their plans for the upcoming year. But President Yoon expanded this format to include public discussions, inviting citizens and experts to address issues impacting people's lives alongside relevant ministries. Now, this approach aims to develop more comprehensive, practical and effective solutions to improve livelihoods of the people, which the South Korean leader has emphasized as a top priority for his administration, which has entered the third year. Now, for those who are curious, past sessions, past policy discussion with the citizens have addressed topics such as housing, jobs, medical reform, public transportation, media policy, the low birth rate and energy policies. Once again, you're tuning in to Arirang's live coverage of President Yoon seok policy discussion with the citizens. As mentioned before, this is the 26th edition of this event. Now, today's discussion is also the first to be held this month. That is June. The last session uh, took place more than a month ago, May 14th, here in Capital Seoul, which focused on labor issues, which is one of the most important lives of the livelihoods of those here in Korea. Uh, measures included protections for non-union workers, discussions revolved around the self-employed as well as freelancers and another big part of the meeting the policy discussion with the citizens in May President Yoon highlighted his commitment and also his strong will to complete what he calls his four major reforms in the medical education pension and labor sectors now at today's meeting once again President Yoon is expected to address the country's manufacturing industry a key industry here in the country now for those who are unfamiliar with what the the policy discussion with the citizens is it started this January that is about more than five months ago when the South Korean leader decided to replace the government policy briefings with these public debates. Now these policy briefings have been here around for the country for quite some time where the presidents would start the new year with briefings from each ministry on their plans for example what they will execute throughout the new year uh, what kind of main goals or pillars they have throughout the year but this year President Yoon decided to expand this format the policy briefings to include public discussions through the policy discussion with the citizens which is inviting citizens the general public and also experts to address issues impacting people's lives alongside relevant ministries to listen to their opinions and think of ways to develop more comprehensive, effective solutions to improve the livelihoods of the people here living in Korea, which he has emphasized as a top priority for his administration, which has once again entered uh, its third year. Now, past sessions, there have been 25 uh, policy discussions with the citizens. They've addressed topics uh, that are are affecting our everyday lives here in Korea, some of the most biggest and chronic issues that the country is facing, to name a few housing, jobs uh, affecting people, especially the younger generation, medical reform. We just saw a report on the medical standoff between the government and the medical community, public transportation, another area, key area, media policy, the low birth rate and more. And it seems like the meeting is about to begin. Let's head straight over.
We would like to pledge allegiance to the flag. Please face the flag. Allegiance to the flag. Please be seated. We would like to begin the policy discussion with the citizens. The president will deliver his opening remarks. Hello, everyone. It's very good to see you. This policy discussion with citizens it is our 26th edition, and we are here at Gyeongsangbukdo, Gyeongsan City, Yongnam University campus, and I'm very delighted to be here. Myself, I was stationed in Daegu, and when I was there, I came to Gyeongsan to many museums and Samcheonji many times. And since it's been a while, and I could see that there were more buildings that were constructed on the campus and the environment has changed, nevertheless, it really makes me feel at home when I'm here and I feel comfortable and I'm really grateful for your hospita hospitality and your warm welcome. The Gyeongbuk citizens. Gyeongbuk is the protagonist of uh, the places that made the Republic of Korea as it is today. In particular, the Maul movement has started out from Chongdo, Shindori town. In 1969, there was a big flood and the then president Park Jong Hee, he was on a train to Gyeongbu and he looked out and he was so surprised to see what was happening and he got off the train and that was where uh, he visited, which was Chongdo, Shindo uh, town. And this Shindo town people, residents of Shindo town, they were volunteering uh, to not only recover the flooded areas, but also they were trying to pre preemptively uh, build the town to become a better place. And uh, President Park was moved by this and he launched this Semal uh, movement that was an exemplary from Chengdo, Shindo town. And we achieved the miracle on the Han River based on this. And Semal movement was not only a movement from the rural areas, but it has become a great force for the people of Korea to advance ahead. At the moment, we are uh, looking at GDP per capita of $40,000 from just uh, $300. And such great history that we have achieved. And based on this, we are leaping forward. And I know that to this end, Yongnam University is doing its best. Yongnam University, in 2012, uh, they launched uh, Semaul Movement Institute, and ever since, uh, it has been uh, disseminating the spirit of Semaul Movement to 73 countries. And this Semaul uh, education itself has become at the forefront of 
attention of many African countries that we have met in early this month. And many leaders from African countries, they were inspired by this Temal movement and they had a chance to study at Yongnam University. And I was told that they, it has become their inspiration. And as such, the central government will support its utmost in terms of making Dongbuk and this Yongnam University to stay at the forefront. I am visiting the, across the country and holding this discussion session, and we are doing our utmost to make a balanced growth of the country. And this local uh, balanced growth is no not different from the Semaul movement spirit. We are trying to find out what are the elements or what are the factors that would lead to the improvement of the regional um, places and policies. So the central government's initiative and the balanced growth initiative is connected to this Semaul movement. Today, we are here to discuss about Gyeongbuk Northeast Asia's Advanced Manufacturing Innovation Hub. We have the governor of Gyeongbuk right here, and together with the governor, we are doing our utmost to advance Gyeongbuk into a manufacturing innovation hub. I've talked about this several days ago, and we are a leading com country in terms of manufacturing, and we have to connect the AI and advanced high-tech uh, areas with manufacturing. And through this policy discussion, I hope that we have a chance to talk about the uh, substantial policies that we can implement for Gyeongbuk to take a leap forward. Innovation and industrial structure is more important than anything else. The textile and steel uh, industries were at the forefront, and at the moment, the hydrogen and bio are the new driving forces that were discovered, and it is driving the industry forward. And the gov central government will support this effort. First of all, the we are going to support the creation of hydrogen economy industrial belt on the East Coast to grow Gyeongbuk into a hydrogen industry hub. At the moment, there are about 30 companies, and they are working towards this a cluster of a hydrogen a fuel cell cluster. And through this, we are doing the demonstration in terms of making this fuel cell uh, that is grown uh, internally, domestically. And the nu Ujin, Nuclear Hydrogen National Industrial Complex, uh, and we have uh, decided last week uh, to exempt this project from due diligence. Uh, preliminary studies. And when this clean hydrogen is created in Ujin, it is, uh, we have to have a hydrogen pipeline network, and we are going to provide support to easily raise funds through the Regional Revitalization Investment Fund as a priming water. And the creation of a SMR technology in order for us to secure the technology in terms of SMR, we are going to support 300 billion won of SMR National Industrial Complex in Gyeongju. And until next year, uh, the ministry will create a fund worth of uh, 80 billion won so that Gyeongbuk can grow into uh, a 
a hub of this um, nuclear power plant industry uh, and the expansion of infrastructure of the technology development and prototype production and also for it to play a leading role in the nuclear power plant industry the central government will support its utmost. Last year, July, Gumi Industrial Park will be grown into a uh, semiconductor specialty complex. First of all, in 2026, the R&D uh, demonstration center will be created. And for this, the, the facility to demonstrate and produce this uh, materials we are going to support and we will invest 150 billion korean won to build a startup park in Gyeongsan and high-tech manufacturing incubator center in Pohang and by doing this startup consulting cooperation and investment attraction which is the uh, whole circle of the startup will be supported Together with Gyeongbuk, the regional venture fund worth of 30 billion won, uh, making Gyeongbuk a leading player in startup Korea, will be also supported. And also, Gyeongbuk, the agriculture of Gyeongbuk, for it to develop into a new and future-oriented industry, we are going to make it a base for smart farms. And at the moment, it is gaining attention around the country uh, of this area to, uh, in terms of smart farms. And the successful model of innovative agricultural towns are going to be supported and it is now growing potatoes and onions and these young people becoming a, a, a salaried farmers. Uh, this is a new model that is bringing more income to the farmers and the farming industry and this is revitalizing the farming industry. So to make Kyungbu a base for smart farms, such innovative agricultural towns will be disseminated across the country and also the utilization of the land, uh, farmlands will be increased and make the system to utilize uh, this project. We are going to actively utilize Ministry of Agriculture's 250 billion won budget. And also, Gyeongbuk's outdated transportation infrastructure will significantly be revamped. By doing this, we are going to make Gyeongbuk, uh, and uh, it is inevitable and it is indispensable in making Gyeongbuk to be a leader in the infrastructure and uh, in the industrial leader. Uh, so the Yongil Bay Crossing Expressway worth of three 3.4 trillion, 3 trillion won, this will be quickly promoted, and also by doing this, the logistics uh, and delivery will be expedited, and the Songju daegu Highway, which has uh, been a longing uh, highway project, we are going to further speed it up, and this will be connected to uh, the uh, mid-expressway of the country and uh, making the whole country into a two-hour living zone. Also, we are going to ensure the expansion of Gyeongju Ulsan section of National Highway number 7, which is a chronically congested section from four lanes to six lanes. Gyeongbu is blessed with rich natural environment. However, a lack of tourism infrastructure prevents uh, the Korean people uh, from fully enjoying it. So we are going to invest 130 billion won of uh, 
budget to Humigot uh, and make it a national marine ecological park. And we're going to support the creation of East Coast creation, recreation belt or to build hotels and resorts along the East Coast. And the central government, together with the uh, private industry, we, are go we have this fund, and by this fund, it is easier for uh, the projects to raise funds, and we are going to allow the municipal gov governments to raise funds, and by doing this, we want to make the uh, East Coast as one of the leading uh, tourism attractions. Gyeonggu is uh, has a, a long history intertwined with of the Korean War. Uh, the battle in Gyeonggu and uh, other uh, missions in the Gyeonggu areas. We have so many people who fought for the freedom of Republic of Korea, the young people. And especially in Pohang Yongil Bay, the first uh, landing uh, plan was executed of during the Korean War. And in order to uh, Remember such devotions. We're going to invest 20 billion won to build East Sea Patriotic History and Culture Center. The local areas for it to lead the development of that area, we have to uh, make sure that the people who were born and who lived there uh, could advance. And therefore, we are going to increase global capabilities of Gyeongbuk students. And we are going to support 12,000 students from multicultural families in Gyeongbuk area. And we are going to uh, reinforce more educational efforts and uh, Korean language la uh, training. And discussions are underway to integrate Gyeongbuk and Daegu. And we would like to see that such integration will improve the quality of life for the residents and a new driving force for regional development and we're going to spare no effort in this regard. Today we have Governor Yi Cheoru and many citizens and entrepreneurs from this region. The new innovation of Gyeongbuk and the new leap forward of Gyeongbuk, I would like to ask for your candid uh, opinions not only the silos between the ministries and the departments, but the silos between the central government and the local governments will be put down, and we are going to expedite the resolution of uh, issues, and we are going to uh, advance forward. Thank you. Right. Those were President Yoon Sung-yeol's remarks at the 26th policy discussion with the citizens, which focused on regional growth and the manufacturing industry. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for our coverage of the key agenda items discussed in our upcoming newscast at noon.